Welcome, everybody, to this week's edition of Valpo Football Weekly. It's brought to you by our friends at Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute. Brandon Vickery with you. Glad to be joined by the head coach of the Valpo Football Program, Landon Fox. And let's talk about Saturday's victory at Moorhead State. Let's skip right to the end of the game. You make the decision to go to, for that fake punt. What led you to take that risk? And then how did you respond defensively when the spot didn't go your way and they end up taking over on downs? Yeah, you know, Brandon, the, the thing was you you could tell, so, we'll, you know, we had an opportunity to see how they were going to align in terms of our punt, and we called timeout and then um, felt like we had the ability to to, to fake the punt. And then, um, you know, the, the thing that disappoints you the most is when you went, went back and watched the film and just didn't block it the way it needed to be blocked, and, and it was there and, and still had the opportunity – you could say maybe we got it, maybe we didn't, but the thing we need to focus on is the fact that we didn't execute the blocking scheme the way it needed to be done, or Brandon, he probably won't, he probably scores a touchdown. And so um, that, that's where we need to get better, the execution piece of it, because that's a big, big play in it. And if he gets the first and, you know, takes a knee or whatever, then it's, it's victory formation. And so that, that was the thing that we, that we took away from it as, as a staff is the execution just must be better. And then, um, when you don't get it, you, you put yourself in a position where you have to play defense to win the game. And, and they're th they threw the ball in the end zone twice um, with the opportunity to win the game. And so that puts you in, in a bad position. So we, we have to get that cleaned up. Colton Sherman comes up with those plays on those uh, two instances where they throw the ball to the end zone. How nice is it to see a senior captain step up in that moment? Yeah, the, the thing that you know we've been talking about as a staff with, with Colton is he's really came on these last you know three or four weeks and has played – um, the way that you expect him to play as a fifth year senior and leader. And um, the thing that, that got us excited about as well is on the sideline, he's, he's a, more of a quiet guy. He leads by example, but on the sideline, he was, he was animated and um, it was being very demanding of his teammates. This is how we need to do it. And this, this, this is how we got to be able to, this is how we got to get it done. And um, for me, that's a step in, in his maturation and to, in his leadership ability, take football side, you know, as he becomes a, a leader within his, you know, business or within his community, the ability to communicate in, in that fashion will help tremendously. Brian Bartholomew has been a big part of a lot of wins for you. He had a rare, rough game the previous week. How was he able to be resilient and bounce back and eventually become the PFL Special Teams Player of the Week this week? Yeah, you know, the thing that, that I would say is that, you know, it wasn't really talked about a whole lot. You know, we, 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 we saw some things from a um, technique standpoint that we felt like we get cleaned up and he did that throughout practice. And to me, you know, you know, Brian has the ability to think like a basketball player in terms of, Hey, you, you know, if you're missing, you know, you just keep shooting and just keep shooting and keep shooting and keep shooting. And, and you know, it, it will, it will go in and, and he'll get his rhythm back. And um, to me, you go up there and you, and you have the ability to, to, to kick the game winner or you have the ability to shoot the game winner. Like, just go up there. I mean, that, that, that pressure is a privilege. Like you, that, that's a fun thing. And you should, you should relish that you have the opportunity to do that. And it didn't go the way he wanted it to last week or two weeks ago. Um, but Hey, next, next game, you no know, next game mentality, next shot mentality. And he, he did just that and came in, kicked a 48 yard field goal. And it, it, it was good to see him bounce back. We've talked a lot about Aaron Dawson, but how can we not talk about it? the PFL Offensive Player of the Week, 12 yards shy of a school record? I and mean, what changed in the second half compared to the first half on Saturday? Well, I would tell you this, you know, and, and it comes back to kind of like I was talking about with the, the fake fake punt and execution piece of it. And not that you're shooting for records, but it's it's nice to have that in, you know, we get a holding call. Uh, we get a holding call that, that keeps him from being the all-time rushing, you know, uh, leader in terms of game. And so you can't have those mistakes. And if you those mistakes are going to lead to, you know, to issues moving forward, and we have to get those cleaned up. But I mean, Aaron Dawson, and I've said this before, and I'll continue to say it to me, he's he's a really good football player. But more importantly, he's a, a good person, and he's a great teammate. And he's selfless, and you know he, he has doesn't have much yardage in the first half, but we had the ability to, to throw the ball. That you know he he's he's going to do what it takes for us to be successful, and then. Um, in the second half, you know, has the ability to, to hit some long runs and make, make he made a number of guys miss you know, on those runs and which allowed us to have success. 
when you're the third team quarterback, I'm sure it can be difficult to stay mentally ready, knowing that uh, going into the H game, the odds are not great that you're going to get in the game. That's what happened with Jeffrey Jackson on Saturday, and he was ready in that moment. How did you stay ready? How was he able to step in and be a part of that win? Well, I'd say Jeff, first, first and foremost, he's very mature. You know, he's been through it. He, you know, he's a fifth year senior. So, um, and has played football before, you know, and, and a num you know, number of different roles and at the University of Chicago to here. And um, so he prepares, you know, like he's going to play. Um, he also has that confidence through his preparation that, hey, if I do play, I'm going to get out there and, and play at a high level. You know, if you say anything, like he looked good. At, just at times things were sped up just because because of that, that, you don't he hasn't been in a lot of game situations, that game speed is just a little bit different. Um, but I was very proud of Jeff and very happy for Jeff um, to be able to go out there and, and run our offense. And it, we, at times, you put a third string quarterback in the game and it's not going to look good. You know, things are going to look broken down and, and it, we still were able to be a, an efficient offense um, with him out there. What's the latest? What can you share with us as far as the quarterback room for this week and the health of your other two quarterbacks? Yeah, right now we anticipate, you know, both both quarterbacks playing. You know, obviously some of that dictates just on um, the decision by the medical staff. Uh, but as, as of right now, you, you, you know, we prepare we're going to prepare as if, um, you know, both Mason and Mikey will play. Um, obviously, Jeffrey will, will uh, you know, I think with Je the Jeffrey piece of it now, he knows a little bit more like, hey, you know, this could be a situation where you know I do do get into the game. Let's talk about uh, what this means to you this week. Your first trip back to Dayton as the head coach at Valpo, where you spent over a decade on staff. Uh, what does it mean to you to be back there? You know, for me, I mean, really, it means nothing in terms of the game, right? It, it, to me, this is about the players. It has nothing to do with me, um, and so I'm not making a tackle. I'm not, you know, throwing the football. So it has really nothing to do with me in terms of the game. Uh, Rick Chamber, he's not making a tackle, you know. So uh, from that perspective, it has zero to do with what's going to happen um, on Saturday. But I would say this, you know, and to me, a, a core value of ours is that I, I was grateful for the opportunity to, to be there uh, for 12 years in, in some form of capacity. And, um I'm, I'm grateful for that and very appreciative of, of those years that I spent there. But from a game standpoint, I, it means absolutely, absolutely nothing. Well, big game coming up, two one-loss teams in the PFL, and I look forward to following along, and I look forward to being there on Saturday. For those of you that are following from home, you can watch. There'll be a Facebook live stream uh, courtesy of Dayton Athletics, and the game starts at noon Central Time on Saturday. For that Coach Landon Fox, this is Brandon Vickery. This has been Valpo Football Weekly, and it's brought to you by Lakeshore Bone & Joint Institute.